are going. And some of this sort of uh, way of loving the local is manifested in maker culture, is manifested in you know, particular ways of reclaiming space or land or growing things or what of making uh, local things. But this labor of loving the uh, local, sometimes a lot of these young people who are 20 years old have not gone that route yet. They're not yet gone into doing maker culture things of their own. <coughs> So I think it's important to have platforms like this where you can show them that loving the local is not simply feeling comfortable in only speaking Cantonese all the time or only or not dealing with the outside world, but it's an act of reimagination as much as it is an act of analysis. And that's what I think they learn to do when they put something like this together. So I think I would say, and I'm sure Megan definitely would agree with me here, that loving the local is hard work. And we need to explain to them why it is hard work. It's not simply uh, retreating into your comfort zone. I think this is uh, you know, a major task for all of us in the academy today who are uh, working in the cultural studies. So, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Let's open up the floor to questions. Just a quick one. Apart from archiving cultural digital youth, is there a space for them to reflect with the locals say uh, digital funeral, digital how do you react to it, do you like it, and what's the impact? What, although I really like the, the recording of those uh, uh, conversations. Yeah. I'm sure we can take this forward, because this is like six people, and I made each one of them do three interviews. So they were still finding their feet, that is like one semester, you can't do very much, right? But uh, I am, uh, we, we are paid continuously to keep this uh, digital humanities uh, is that what it's called? Lingnan Digital Humanities Foundation. And uh, we have recently made a new hire, and we hope to personally join us by August, who will take forward this initiative at Lingnan. And definitely we want to be structured in such a way that we've now made the, others, the older students contributors. They can't any longer massively edit what's on the website. But every year we have a new cohort of people who can contribute. And I don't see it as a, a standalone course. I see it as using many other courses that could be taught in cultural studies, which have a component of students creating knowledge in different ways, uh, through internships or through other you know, modes of engagement with life outside the classroom, and I think they could all contribute to But that's very exciting, and I, I will take that question to the new class. Thank you. In India, we have a digital worship. Uh, it's very common. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I came up against when I was imagining the digital in a, in a place like Lingnan. Yeah. Because uh, it's like saying, I'm sorry, I hope I don't sound like the people you met in Dubai who sell us at Indonesia <laughs> and had obviously gone to sleep for 20 years. It wasn't quite the case. It's just some things I see going past on the horizon and I say, do I really want to deal with this? I don't. But then you see that you know, I've been doing this work since the late 1990s, right? Before something called digital humanities became popular. So I have, you know, I have many uh, colleagues and friends who are practitioners of what is today this niche area for digital humanities. And their idea of this big tent digital humanity that includes everything is fine by me. I have no problem with that. But I think that you know, if you set your sights so high, then you know, oh, you're rushing around learning programming, whatever. I mean, I'm too old to do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I am, I'm sure that maybe younger scholars would want to uh, have that kind of access. So I think that digital humanities people, there are also puritanisms of digital humanities, and they try to uh, enforce a particular way of engaging with geekdom. I found this in the Wikipedia community, right? Uh, so that you have to only engage in that way. So I have no patience with that. And I felt, you know, I misuse my advantage of being in, in cultural studies, and simply called digital cultural studies, so no one can come along and tell me, this is digital humanities and you have to do it that way, or else you won't get into the referee, referee journals or whatever. I think so for that reason, I'm slightly skeptical about simply jumping on the bandwagon. Sure. But this allows me a little uh, a space <coughs> outside of that set of uh, debates, many of which I find extremely pointless. 
I've, I've learned from uh, some of the, the courses that people have put out. I, you know, I, I sign up to a couple of networks like the uh, DH network in mm -hmm. North Carolina and so on. So people are saying interesting things. But as it becomes more and more of a niche area, people are endlessly producing added stuff that 